question on a topic. The topic might be serving Krishna in right mood. Yeah. So, and the question is like, this question is very small, like, should we pay obeisances to spiritual master in front of deities or not, or any Vaishnava? Or anyone? Not in front of the deities. Generally not in public, you know, with non-devotees. They might misunderstand. In India, maybe it's okay. What was the question? Should uh, we pay obeisances to the spiritual master? Yes, yeah, the Srila Prabhupada here. In the temple, we do that. The Shastra says no. I'm the wrong person to ask that question because I'll just say no. But there's a nice story I told before this devotee paid obeisances to Bhakti Siddhanta. Yeah, in the mud, and he got up full of mud on his face and stood in it. Bhakti said, to Sir Shanti Thakur, said, why did you do that? And he said, well, Lord, these obeisances are my only wealth. So, There is a problem here in Mayapur. The temple's not big enough for everybody, and everyone decides to do Dandavats, and then we can't do anything. We're just stuck. They give us the wall, we can't move. So it's, you know, it should be practical also. Prabhupada paid obeisance to Lord Jagannath on the street. I was there. I saw it. So you might think. Here comes our other other card, we shouldn't pay obeisances because people will think we're weird. They'll think we're bowing down to a stone on the street. Anyway, Prabhupada did. 
Papa was transcendental, so they just did whatever was proper and pleasing to Krishna. So, but you know, sometimes it's inappropriate. And sometimes physically you can't do it. But when it's appropriate, you should always do it. Or you can ask your spiritual master. It's hard being a spiritual master because if you ask us, we'll just say, never. You want to know what I feel, but what's proper is another. Prabhupada had his disciples pay obeisances every time they saw him. So if you saw Prabhupada, you brought him a chapati, you went down to the kitchen, you brought him another chapati, you would pay obeisances. And then you left your pay obeisances. Prabhupada liked that. And then they would come in and they would just bow down and get up. They wouldn't say anything. So paying obeisances means you say the month, full mantra. So you see many devotees that walk in the temple and just hit their head on the ground and they don't get up. So when Prabhupada saw that, he stopped them. He said, what is this hatchet? Hatchet. They didn't know what he meant. He said, what Prabhupada? This hatchet. You just bow down and come up and you don't chant any mantra. And then sometimes devotees would chant quietly in front of Prabhupada and he said, you should say it out loud. It should be heard. That's what I know. You see, the problem is, it's easy to describe what we did for Prabhupada, but Prabhupada was in a different category and he was the founder of Charya. So our position was different. Sometimes we try to do the same things for us as we do for him and it's inappropriate. Sometimes we try not to do the same thing for us and that's also inappropriate. So you have to have some sense of judgment. When Prabhupada left, there were 11 devotees who became gurus. But Prabhupada was the only founder of Charya Vishnu. The next following gurus were not founder of Charya, they were just Diksha gurus. And we didn't understand anything about Diksha. So we thought, everything in the Shastra that says, you should have full faith in the guru, the guru is as good as God, all this, meant a Diksha guru. Now there's nowhere in Shastra where it says Diksha guru, it just meant and anyone who is your guru, Diksha or Siksha. So we made a big hullabaloo about Diksha because Prabhupada was a Diksha, Siksha, he was everything. And we honored him as a Mahabhava. But it's so interesting, when you see the word Guru in Shastra, it never says Diksha Guru, it just says Guru. So Guru means Siksha or Diksha. And here's some bad news for all of those who were hoping that by initiation you would get a free pass to Vaikuntha. It's not that easy. You sit in a ceremony and all, all of a sudden you've got a seat on the Vaikuntha airplane. Now the Siksha is the most important because the Siksha in its instruction is the direction of how to go back to Bali. So, you know what's so interesting? It's, it's, a, it's such a such an interesting subject because the way gurus are worshipped at different times in history has changed. And so, you, um, you see kind of a certain culture that developed in this kind of, maybe is not exactly the traditional culture, it just came out that way. Did you know that there's one go to your mom temple? There's one Acharya, he initiates everybody. And he doesn't give any instruction. And another Acharya is the Sikhi Guru for everybody. And everyone takes instruction from him. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that? No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to 
hear something interesting also? You know what a picture guru is? Do you know? He's not the one who gives you hard knock. In the Shastra, it says Diksha Guru, it means the one who's giving you the mantras, mantra chikhi mantras, to worship the deity. That's a Diksha Guru. So every other guru is a Siksha Guru, except the one who gives you those mantras. And before the time of Mahaprabhu, no one had a Hare Krishna mantra. So you couldn't chant a mantra unless you had a Diksha Guru who would give you the Diksha mantra. Then you just do that. There is a reason it's feeding back. Let's do that. So, um, the Diksha Guru would give Diksha mantras, not the Maha mantra, because anybody, nobody needed a Guru to get the Maha mantra. Well, you have to get it from a Guru, but you don't have to get initiated. You have to get it from Vaishnava, but you don't have to get initiated. But to get the bunch of tricky mantras, you have to get initiated because they don't work unless you get them from a bona fide guru, and they don't work if you're not bona fide. So before the Maha Mantra, people were chanting the Diksha Mantras. That was their job. And specifically, the householders were told to worship the deity so they wouldn't spend all their money on 90-inch TV screens, so they would spend it on the deities. And the householders specifically were given deity worship and were initiated. This is a completely different situation now, isn't it? Yes. Um, it's a different topic, but um, what can you Wait, wait, wait. I just uh, turn this a little bit and then. There's a. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Oh, what I was going to say is so we have a problem. We have a problem. There is a guru called Ritvix. And their, their whole thing is, Prabhupada is the Diksha guru. It's all about Diksha. Everything about Diksha. And Siksha is more important than Diksha. Prabhupada is the Siksha guru. That's more important than Prabhupada being the so-called Diksha guru. So that's, that whole philosophy is based on a misunderstanding that Diksha is like everything. And, and they, by making... You know, Prabhupada is the Siksha Guru also, but like, it's giving all importance to Siksha. And then the next misunderstanding, they say women can be Siksha Guru, but they can't be Diksha Guru. That means they're giving a higher service to women, and you can be a Siksha Guru, which is higher than a Diksha Guru. Because there's a misunderstanding. And the misunderstanding has to be cleared up. So it's just interesting. Um, there's, there's reasons for the misunderstanding. And Shastra says so many things about Guru and sometimes not contradictory things. So, does anyone want to ask anything about this topic or make a comment before we go on? Yes? Can you elaborate more about the topic of Shiksha Guru? Yeah. And the different how it is. Well, you don't even need a Diksha Guru to chant Hare Krishna. Because we're all chanting Hare Krishna. There's a traditional understanding of it, and there's the way Prabhupada presented it and understood it. So what Prabhupada wanted to do with us, he wanted us to make a commitment at the time we take Hare Nama. Because it's not going to work if we don't chant 16 rounds and follow four principles. So as we said before, he made that arrangement with Krishna. Four rounds of 16 rounds, four principles. So he wanted us to commit to that. And he credited us, okay, you'll get initiated, which we call Diksha, but it's not really, technically speaking, you make a vow and we formalize it, and then I'll give you a spiritual name, because that's part of the process. But, the, but he said, <coughs> the ceremony is not the initiation. The vow is the initiation. So if you made the vow 10 years ago, and you're getting initiated now, you've actually been initiated for 10 years, because your initiation is your commitment. And the vow should be to the spiritual master? Yeah. That's the ceremony. That's the way Papa did it. Because Jagan Madhai did that to Lord Chaitanya. So Prabhupada 
And like Chaitanya said, I will accept his disciples if you don't commit any more sin. So the way I understand it, it's just my personal understanding, Prabhupada is modeling this initiation that we have after Jagan Mata, because we're a little bit like Jagan Mata. And Prabhupada, you, can't, you know, we're not like from Brahmin families who never committed sin. Like, I think just chant Hare Krishna, no problem. And you get the beads and you just chant 64 rounds every day and get up at 2 o'clock. And that's what you do because you're so pure. But no, we haven't done that. Oh, no, you, you, commit. you commit. So at that point, you want to commit, then you make it official. But way before, you, you should first commit. And you're, you, you know, like someone says, I'm aspiring to take initiation from you. Say, well, have you committed to the principles? Do you have faith in me? Well, you're actually already initiated. But you, can, you know, when you feel confident, then you can make that vow. But that's actually the real initiation. So, so, um, so siksha means instruction. So it's by instructions that we become Krishna conscious and go back to Godhead. Right? And so who's the most important guru in your life? Well, you may have many gurus that are important. But the one who's guiding you with instruction is generally the most important because that's how you get out of the material world. So the one whose instructions you, that you have faith in, deep faith, deep inspiration, that's, that's the Siksha Guru. And the Siksha Guru may not be expert in everything, so you may have another Siksha Guru who can train you in some other aspect of Krishna consciousness. So you can have many. We put all emphasis on Diksha. Um, but it, it, it's interesting because technically Diksha Guru gives a second initiative. And what's also interesting is it's said in Shastra that when you get initiated, the process is, of initiation is by which you get transcendental knowledge and become free from sin. That's from Jiva Goswami. But when we begin Krishna consciousness, you've all read in Shastra, when you chant the holy name, you become free from sin. When you take Chandramita, you become free from sin. When you see the deity, you become free from sin. It's like everything we do, everywhere we look, everywhere we walk, on every grain in Mayapur, you know, it's like free from sin. In every class, we're getting transcendental knowledge. So, the Guru is giving you transcendental knowledge and freeing you from sin at the time of initiation and giving you the mantra, but you already have the mantra and you're already free from sin. Interesting. Isn't it? So many questions. Yes? Our Guru Shishya Parampara is Shiksha oriented. Yes. Uh, but we see today in our movement, it has become quite diksha oriented. Yes. So how did this last How did it happen? Back in 1978. Because <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada was everything. And so Prabhupada is the Acharya, and the only example we had of a guru was Prabhupada. But if in Bodhiyamatha groups, they weren't like that. There wasn't such a distinction. There's a big distinction between us and Prabhupada. And we wanted to honor Prabhupada that way. And he, he saw it was good and he did it. So when Prabhupada left and the, the, the 11 disciples took over, the only example they had of a guru was Prabhupada. And they didn't realize he was the founder of Charya, and they weren't, and so therefore there's a difference. So we didn't have any precedent. So basically, they did everything exactly the way he did it. And they thought that every person, every person that joins in their zone would become their disciple. They had Guru Puja every day for them. They give class every day. And that's what Prabhupada did. <laughs> and if he didn't like that, you were in trouble. Because you said, no, that's wrong. Because nobody, under well, something was understood, but, you know, it's like we were young, we didn't know. And, um, <coughs> and it never fully left us. There's another problem. Um, 
other problem I was mentioning, or in a meeting I was mentioning. You, if you want to accept a guru, you need to study that guru and see if you can surrender, if you have faith, if he's qualified. And the guru needs to study you. So, a guru has, like your guru has, just 4,000 people waiting. How can he study 4,000 people? How can he study you? So the problem is, your Guru Maharaj comes in the temple, he leads kirtan, it's like, oh my God. He gives class, it's like, oh my God. He's got all these amazing disciples. If that's enough for me, I'm convinced. Where do I sign? Right? So, and then some other Guru comes in, amazing kirtan, amazing class, but he doesn't have hundreds of people around him. So he's not a brahmachari, and this and that. So it's a different brand name. So people are making decisions on branding, especially those in India. That's the kind of culture. You know, they do things in groups. So, you know, how do you change that? It's through education. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. We have a letter. Uh, my my mother says that mother actually is the first guru. Is it correct? It is correct. <laughs> she just can't give you diksha yet. <laughs> but the mother's first guru. Officially in this God, no. Either is it officially in this God a process for being recognized as a Siksha Guru? And both of these things are discussed all the time. I was just in meeting, this was all discussed. Training Siksha Guru is qualifying. And if someone says to you, you're my Siksha Guru, like, what does that mean? To you, what does it mean to them? Technically speaking, it should, it's a guru disciple relationship, so it's the same as any guru disciple relationship. There's no difference. <coughs> now, some people may say so and so is my six year guru, but actually they're probably just a mentor. There's not, it's not a guru disciple relationship. The guru disciple relationship is a little deeper. In theory, you know, it's Kali Yuga, but in theory, you're actually supposed to do what your guru asks you to do. Believe it or not. And gurus are smart, they don't always ask everything. But, um, yeah, there is no difference. Now, here's something controversial. Could, it could sound controversial, it's not. It's just in our culture, it could sound. You may have a deeper relationship with a sexual guru than a diction guru. Um, for whatever reason, it could be proximity. Could be resonant, you resonate, whatever. You know, it's, it's individual person. But if you have a deeper relationship with a six-year girl than a six-year girl, the first response for most of us is just to feel guilty. Maybe you know, this is not good, I'm not faithful to my girl. But in traditional culture, that was like, there wasn't competition. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, that's great. Um, yes. Um, yeah. Sometimes the diksha guru is so busy with uh, so many uh, yeah. disciples yeah. that, that uh, it's easier to find a shiksha guru that that you can yeah. relate to. Yeah. Here's another problem. Thirteen years ago, I went, I wasn't a guru. Now, although I was, but nobody thought I was, until I became a Diksha Guru. The day after I became a Diksha Guru, there were lines of people, will you be my Siksha Guru? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you know me, you know that I like to teach, and I've been doing that since like the, the day I joined. 
And so that's what I do. So I was definitely a six year guru because I just had that nature, you know, it wasn't like I didn't adjust. But then uh, a devotee asked me to initiate it. And after that, everybody started saying, Can I be your, can you be my sit mat, everybody? But before then, you know, like once every four years. And now it was like once every week. So that's, you know, he's a, he's a Diksha Guru, bona fide, authorized, stamped. Now he can be my Diksha Guru. Other people can't be. I gotta make tough choices. Return, return us forgiving. Let, let, let Sean, Sean, he looks really anxious. Return out his hat. What does this mean? No, uh, also we can see that um, because it's not a formal institution, it's a position, no, yeah. position uh, but uh, in order that what you're explaining, we can understand that some not Diksha Guru, a uh, senior devotee, can, uh, can have Shiksha disciples. Yes, of course. But it's not formal, as you say, when he became a uh, Diksha Guru, yeah, he's right. accepted, but yeah, yeah. we can have that relationship normally. It's normal. Yeah. Or, or it happens in rare circumstances, like like with Manu Swami who lives in Chennai. So he's the resident guru. He's the resident sannyasi, the most learned devotee, one of the most learned devotees in this country. So naturally, and the, and the Diksha guru of Chennai, I think, is mostly Chakravartish, but because of his illness, he's not there that much. So. Is that he's like the guru, but he doesn't want to take teacher disciples. So he naturally became a sixth guru. So that does happen sometimes. Um, the other point is the, the traditional culture is uh, very good. Is the young boys take diksha with his guru, family guru. Yeah. And then he took a siksha guru as uh, his guru, personal guru. Yeah. They took up an eye on them, so they got the. From a Gayatri mantra, and then they could learn from their guru. <coughs> Do you know that a lot of boys join this kind in India with Brahmin threats? Yes. they were initiated as kids. Yes. Ajinkya has Brahmin threads. has Brahmin thread, but he doesn't have initiation in this kind. What to do? Get two threads. Whoever gets the microphone, grab it. You want Nikon wants to say something. Let Nikon say something. He's telling to say. Yeah. We'll get to you. Maharaj, like like you mentioned that like even Shiksha Guru can uh, keep the Aina Mahamantra. So my question is if someone is uh, under a bona fide Shiksha Guru but he doesn't take initiation. Then he goes back to God. Whoa! <laughs> You'll have to ask Krishna. Mm -hmm. The answer to that, he's asking, can you go back to God if you don't take an initiation? Well, I would say that based on the definition Prabhupada gave of initiation, is a commitment to follow the four principles, chant 16 rounds, and you commit that to somebody. Yes, even if it's not efficient. The Prabhupada said both things. He said sometimes you have to take initiation to get credit for everything you're doing. Other times he says it's not that necessary. And it's, it's like there's things in Shastra by which you could establish the answer to be yes and the answer to be no. But if I say you must be initiation, initiated to go back to Godhead, the problem that ensues is you'll do it if you're not qualified because you want to go back to Kaidat, so you'll try it. And everyone will do it. And everyone will line up for initiation even if they're not qualified, qualified because they think you have to do it. If you don't do it, you won't go back to Kaidat, so I'll do it. And then you do it and you, you, you don't follow it. So there's no, there's no credit <coughs> to do it and not follow it. But why ask that question? Well, it's a good question. But if you're serious, then you would take initiation. 
I ask just to understand the distinctions between them. Yeah. I mean, different gurus might say different things, but if you're already chanting Hare Krishna, you're following Sri Prabhupada. That's like the Rithik said, what if we have Prabhupada? And I totally agree. And they say Prabhupada will take us back to God. I have no doubt. But it does Prabhupada does say you should take initiation from a bona fide guru. So if you can do that, you shouldn't. But if you don't, because your question is almost like, well, if the Rithiks are wrong, and none of them are initiated, they just imagine they are. But they Prabhupada is their Siksha Guru, can they go back to God? I would say yeah. I wouldn't doubt that. Uh, it's so powerful. Uh, Maharaj, like sometimes we hear this, <clears throat> like it is your Diksha Guru that who will take you back. So there is no no one else responsibility. Like some many times we hear this in temples. So, so <laughs> your Diksha Guru will take you back, and what will Prabhupada do? Prabhupada do I mean, the point is like. Diksha Guru is your connection to Prabhupada and to Krishna then. So that's what's the main preaching in main temple. And all the other devotees are preaching, aren't connecting you to Prabhupada? They're connecting to your Diksha Guru. Yeah. No, they're giving classes from Prabhupada's books. <laughs> but it's they don't even know your Diksha Guru. They're, they don't know what he's teaching. They know what Prabhupada's teaching. Um, You are being saved by your Diksha Guru, your Siksha Guru, by Prabhupada, by the Pasacharyas, by all the books, by the Sana, by everything together. It's all, it's all, it's all. It's an entire process. <coughs> Some, have you ever heard a class that just kind of clarified something for you? That was very important? Like just somebody who's not your Diksha Guru? What did that do? It connected you to Krishna or to Prabhupada. So I think the problem is that oftentimes we get hung up in philosophy when we have practical realization that by hearing from senior devotees, things change in my heart. And, and that senior devotee may not be my Diksha Guru, even officially my Siksha Guru, but it's very powerful. And what am I supposed to do? Deny that. It didn't happen. It did happen. And all you have to do is just acknowledge it. It happened. Uh, just an extension of that, the senior devotee could be outside Escon also. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Now we're getting deep stuff. <laughs> that senior six year guru could be outside of Escon. <laughs> Outside of this one. <laughs> the title of my number. It's a horror movie. It's a horror movie. No horror fiction movie. What we have seen is if he's outside of this one, but he's no longer physically present, that doesn't break the same problem. The, prop, the main, there's two problems. There may be a different Siddhanta. And there's a different organization, a different fidelity. There are gurus outside of this kind of world. They tell their disciples to stay in this kind and serve them. And that can work. But it always comes with some chance. It comes with some chance. If you go out of this Islam, you'll definitely hear that you were never in Vaikuntha and you fell from Brahman or Mahavishya. Just, just to warn you. I mean, it's okay. I'm not saying that's even wrong. But if you're in Iskand, you'll hear that you must have felt a different Or, you know, something. But out, outside there, there's no even discussion that couldn't happen. Um, and there, may be, there may be discussions that are more focused on esoteric topics. But maybe you're not. And you won't hear so much in this one. Right? So, what to do? That's interesting. Um, we, yeah, we had that problem when, after Prabhupada left. The devotees were going outside to hear from Prabhupada's government. Most of the devotees that went out to hear from Prabhupada's godbrothers left this now. It was just kind of like, there was a different mood, a different, everything was different. Not that it was wrong. 
But it was just different than this one. And they wanted to be outside. Like, that's what happens when they all went outside. Very rare that they heard from Prabhupada's godbrothers and stayed in this one. Not that those godbrothers were saying to leave. But... So anyway, but be warned. That's traditionally what happens. Jesus now they you know they thought Jesus is the only the only guru. Now they're thinking he's God. So a matter of time people may be thinking, should sure, Prabhupada is God. Yeah, Prabhupada, hopefully not, but Prabhupada became, impossible. Yeah, Prabhupada became very upset when this four devotees started this, you know, preaching this. So um, my question is Well you know, one thing that's really important. Remember I was saying that the initiation Prabhupada gave, he modeled it off of Chaga and Mata. Because the Gaudi Mata initiations are different. They don't, they don't make vows. There's no vows in there. So Prabhupada, you know, so we, if, the, the, which is an interesting problem, but the problem is you can go to Shastra and historical precedent and come up with different conclusions than the things Prabhupada did. So we really have to notice what Prabhupada did. And not not second guess what he did. Say, well, Guru Mata did this and Chiva Goswami says this and you know. So we could really get confused. So um, Prabhupada never said you take teacher from someone who's not alive. He, and, you know, he never said Prabhupada always said, I'm not qualified, it's just the mercy of my guru. So then why didn't he do rhythmic initiation if he felt he wasn't qualified? Because it's not the tradition. So he said, I'm not qualified, but he never said, I'm not giving good Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm also seeing some of the fault was on, you know, in the 80s, the followers of some of the, the, the gurus were there thinking the gurus are on the level of Shiva Prabhupada. Yeah, yeah, so what what are some of the misconceptions in this, you know, today, this day and age, that we should be careful <coughs> with, with relating to our guru? Probably the biggest problem is my guru is better than yours. <coughs> My guru is the one. But I have to say something first. No, I have to Give her the microphone. I want to say something. This is this is from me, Don Donovan. When, you know, we're all God brothers and God sisters. And Prabhupada's leaves and eleven and eleven of them became overnight pure devotees. <coughs> And so their disciples are saying, you descended from the spiritual world to bless us, things like that, because that's kind of, that's also a misunderstanding. The guru does not have to descend from the spiritual world, because, because there are different kinds of gurus. And so everybody thought the guru is a Mahabhagavad, there's only one kind of guru, so if you become that guru, then you got elevated by Prabhupada to Mahabhagavad status, and maybe you already were, we just didn't recognize it. So you don't know, he, he said something really funny. Initially, people were writing the Pujas saying, I know you're taking lunch with Radha and Krishna <laughs> in the groves of the Kunja, you know, Rikti Kirisudu. You are with Radha and Krishna. And then a lot of gurus started falling down. And we got none of us did not fall down, we never had a problem. So the Vyasapuja's offerings went from you're taking prasadam and Radha and Krishna to ten years later, thank you for not falling down. <laughs> so, ooh, they finally figured that out. 
like we see the, the thing is you should also be guru so if you think I'm like an incarnation you're a Prabhupada disciple and you and where you grew up was right near the temple so that definitely means you're an avatar and you never had any trouble in Krishna consciousness so double avatar you know? and then you, you like make me something I'm not the problem with that there's many problems with that but one of the problems is that that means you could never be a guru because your guru is like must be a demigod that just landed you know, whatever Nice Tiki Brahman try and go to Yamas that came to take birth and help Prabhupada. So you then that means okay, well all of us forget it. We can't we can't I can't do what my guru does. Listen to this. This is amazing. Prabhupada said, he said, this is really interesting. Prabhupada said, I did ten times what my guru did. Whoa. That sounds pretty proud, doesn't it? I did ten times by his mercy. And you are Americans, so you do twenty times what I did. You should be doing Prophet's telling us we should do twenty times what he did. Twenty times? What he did? Yeah. Now look at Prophet had five thousand disciples. Right? Jack much. Almost twenty times that much, right? Seventy thousand? Yeah. So it's almost, it's almost 20 times your problem. So Prabhupada, you know, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. Everyone has a father and mother. And if you have a good father and mother, then you think your father and mother are the best father and mother. Unless they're not. But, but assuming they're good, assuming they're a good father and mother, you'll think, my father, this is the daddy, you're the best daddy in the world. We're running around. Yeah. That little run around is your sucker show me time. So if you ask her, is your daddy the best? He goes, he's the best daddy. Okay. Now, Objectively speaking, is Sankarshan Nitai the best daddy in the world? <laughs> Probably not. But to the daughter, he is. So naturally, to the disciple, you chose that person to be your guru because you feel he's, for you, he's the best. Objectively, he's the best? Not necessarily. Could be the best in something. Right? So, then you get in my guru is better than your guru. He's the one. He's the only one. Then, then it gets bad when like he's the only one. And everyone else. He's the only pure devotee. He's the only one to mind. You know, it's like, that's when you run into real strange things. Gets cultish. We are in a religious movement. You've not, have you noticed that? Some weird people walking around here. Have you noticed them? We're in a religious movement. A religious movement, if you're not careful, it just naturally lends itself to cult-like, fanatical, black and white thinking. And if we don't always try to keep things balanced in the middle, they tend to oscillate. Because the way we understand and read scripture, it can be very black and white. And it can cause strange thinking. And we've all seen it. Yes. So I would say also, I think most of us would say that for what we knew in the age we were at, probably it couldn't have happened any differently than it did. And that happened that way because we didn't know. But here's, here's my experience of it. We had no experience of Prabhupada leaving. So Prabhupada leaves. And then the GBC meets in March of 1978. They didn't know what to do. They didn't, most of them didn't start a mission. They didn't know, should we, should we? The GBC decides we should, and we should do it like Prabhupada. So they're building Vyasasanas for the GBC. So then our GBC, who's, they're not building, they're building Vyasasanas for all the new gurus. So our new guru sits on the Vyasasana for the first time, and I'm there. 
in the temple. And at that time, yeah, I was like the Sankirtan leader of one of the biggest temples in America. So I was like right in the middle of it. And he sits on the Vyasa sign. And I didn't know what was wrong, but I knew something was wrong. I said, this is wrong. This does not feel right. There's something. But I didn't have enough knowledge. The people were saying, no, this is, you know, it's like your pure devotee is left. We need another one. You know, the general's died. Put another. So it's like every, half the people wanted a general, you know, because Prabhupada left. They wanted a new Prabhupada. And I was looking at that thinking, nah, I don't know what we should do, but I know this doesn't feel right. Yes. My question was, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, did he not uh, need request for regular guidance? Administration, as far as I know, he didn't. I can't say why. He might say those were requirements for living in the temple. But, and I would think most of his initiated brahmacharis, if not all, was in the temple, and then the great hostages were like, good luck. I'm not 16 hours. What I was told was 16 rounds for the brahmacharis, but if they were too busy for, then the great hostages don't start the wall and chant something. In, uh, in Gaudiya Mata, they didn't give much emphasis to the houses. We're more concerned with the, the temple. And of course it's up to the individual what they want to do. And that's what I've been told. So they had no fire sacrifice at initiation. I'm just saying, here, Chandra Krishna Jane, Korban and Dallas, it's over. How much should I do? Don't start the all. Continuing on now, like how did you Prabhupada start chant 16? Probably because that was the standard in the temple. These are things that I've been told by people who have heard from Prabhupada's Godbrothers. I've also been told by his Godbrother. There's also, the, you know, 64 rounds if you have nothing to do. For 64, that's the standard. So Prabhupada is, you know, he's looking at things, he's taking things to the West, he's adapting, testing, and then saying, okay, this is how you'll get back to God, you do this. And Prabhupada's asking us to spread Krishna consciousness. So if you go to Gaudiya Math, you might see more emphasis on bhajan, <coughs> study, philosophy, more esoteric things. Putting more time into that, and Prabhupada's was like, just help me spread this moment. Do you know that story? Someone asked Prabhupada for his mercy. He said, I need your mercy. Or he said, if you want my mercy, you know, I have so many headaches. Help me relieve my headaches. So that was really what Prabhupada wanted. You know, if, you, if you could do something, you could start a temple. You could publish a new book. You could distribute a lot of books. You could start some new program, take care of cows, do a farm, make devotees. You know, tangible because it's not that that was the only criteria but he wanted so much people to be Christian conscious so he always pushed that so nobody during Prabhupada's time ever thought I'll just be a Vajana Nandi it wasn't the word but if you tried to do it it would be like what's wrong with you you know that we're spreading this movement Prabhupada's non-stop spreading this movement. What are you doing? And there was an incident here in my book, someone on the chat 64 rounds. And they told Prabhupada, and they said, Prabhupada, he wants to chant 64. And Prabhupada said, as soon as you say I want, he just sends for the So it gives you an idea of what Prabhupada is like. And this is what the this is what my grandmother wants, this is what I'm doing. You do it also. So you know, we were almost to the point of afraid to go left or right, because we knew Prabhupada's pointing us this way, just go this way. You're safe, just go, don't, don't create new ideas. So we chanted 16 rounds, we chanted a little more, it's good, but the main thing was we were trying to spread Krishna consciousness. 
He wanted us to study his books, of course, at 10 classes. And I, gave, I have given lectures in which I said, when I was a young devotee, I wasn't smart enough to deviate. And now that I'm older and smarter, I can much better deviate. I could be, I hopefully I'm not, but I could be much better deviate. Well, Prabhupada said this, but he did that, and of course we understand this. And Shastra says this, so, and then I come up and say something that was like Prabhupada never said. That can easily happen. Could never happen when we were young devotees, we weren't that smart. We weren't smart enough to be stupid. Did that make sense? We weren't smart enough to be stupid enough to concoct something. You want to say something? Oh, she's got the mic. Yeah, I think the mic is considering her question. I have one friend, and she's a Gaudiya Math, and she got this kind of initiation and a uh, name, and now she's not actually getting a picture because she's smoking and she's not up to the standard, so probably they are uh, actually they are actually asking all these Yeah, well, I think, I think <coughs> as far as I know, Narayan Rush basically copied what Prabhupada did. He just, yeah, and they also asked her to chant 16 times. Yeah, so yeah. is it coming from Prabhupada? No, I think, as far as I know, Narayan Rush was always asking the Prabhupada disciples, what did Prabhupada do? How did he do it? Did he, like he took morning walks, he bought time. He was just doing the same thing. Uh, Guru Maharaj, about taking a uh, Brahmana initiation, um, uh, in, in my personal case, in the beginning I was attracted to deity worship, in the beginning of my spiritual journey, but now I feel uh, attracted more to practical because I see there is a lot of beauty worship going on, but I feel they need to do the practical thing. Uh, so, it's still, I'm very attracted to reading Sri Prabhupada's books, and so much to hear from him, from you. So, uh, do, can I start for Brahminika initiation, or I don't need that, I don't know, maybe I'm not qualified. The answer is yes and yes. You can inspire, but if you don't get it, it's okay. You really <laughs> I have to ask you this. The person is good. You know, I can't answer it because I'm not the one who would give it to you. So it's really a question for him to answer. And some girls will not give it unless the devotee wants to do the vision. And some will because they feel they're qualified and they'll help them. But in the age of Kali, the process for deliverance is the Maha Mantra. Not second initiation, but it'll help. It can help, but it's not absolutely needed. So now here's another thing. I don't know if you know this. Prabhupada said the real initiation is first initiation. Did you know that? And he also said the real initiation is second initiation. <laughs> no, no, no. Like our second initiation. But who did he say it to? Why did he say it? So maybe for that devotee, they were qualified. So for them, yeah, you should complete your initiation. That'll be the real completion of your initiation because you're qualified. At the same time, if you're not qualified for it, you have Harinam, and that's enough. So it's like, I understand, like, hey, Harinam's enough, but if you can qualify for second, why not? Why not? You might get more mercy. Krishna, um, someone was asking me today about um, the, well, we were discussing about the three-day course which is happening on um, how to become a guru or a leader in ISKCON. And they were challenging that how is it possible to qualify someone to be a guru in three days. <laughs> and they had a huge problem with this if it's not in someone's nature to be a pure devotee and to guide people. And, uh, yeah. Well, I don't think you can 
qualified guru. You either are qualified or not, but you can educate in some practical affairs of what that job is going to entail. When you're a six-year girl, you think, well, I already know how to do it. But there are different things go on with six-year girls. It's part of the culture in this one. You're a six-year girl, it's like, oh, how are you going? How are you going, six-year girl? <laughs> How's it going today? Girl, okay, talk to you later. <coughs> when you're a six-year girl, it's like, girl, how are you? Other devotees falling at your feet, throwing money at you, what do you need? You're the greatest thing that ever walked the earth. Every word you say is dripping with nectar. All your kirtans are amazing. My heart is not young. And you have to live with that. It's much different. And so, some, as you, I wrote a paper with 108 things that happen when you become a guru. And I just listed a bunch. And those are things that have thrown some people who took that job into mind. So it's, what you say is true. You can't qualify them, but you can let them know where this road is going and how to do well the potholes are and so on. Um, and the more the time goes by, the more I see that that information is necessary. And another thing that's happening also, which a lot of you are aware of, is that in the Christian tradition, the, the priests, they're trained in counseling. But our gurus are not trained in counseling. So you have some problem, and they'll give you a shloka, but the shloka is not really addressing the problem. It's, it's, they don't understand it. It's, it's not just a philosophical issue, but it's maybe some conditioning you're dealing with. Pastoral counseling helps you with that. But if you don't have that training, or at least you, you don't understand that a lot of the help that the bodies need is not just in spiritual guidance, but it may be in psychological or emotional. At least you can say, okay, go to some person. Because a lot of times when you when you get spiritual guidance for a problem where it needs something else, it, it just can make it worse. Like I always say, you can have very good devotees with a very bad marriage. And very bad devotees with a very good marriage because they have some relational skills. Right. So, you know, I can give you shlokas about, you know, what to do. Well, it asks Prabhupada, tell us about marriage. He goes, yeah. He goes, yeah. You cook for Sodom and before you eat, you go outside and say, is anybody hungry? And then if you feed whoever comes. And that's great hospital. Yeah, Grihastas should be charitable, they should do it. But what about all the other Kali Yuga problems? Yeah, yeah marriage counselors. <laughs> so things like that, just to know. That may be a man who's a Brahmachari and the sannyasi good enough. The time the sannyasi was talking about Grihastu life in the class, and one devotee who works teaching Grihastha life said, uh, Maharaj, what you said was, was not correct. And she corrected him and he was, oh, thank you. And, no, no, I think she said, what you said is wasn't correct. And he said, oh, thank you. What should I say? And she said, don't talk about Grihastha life because you're not qualified to do it because you're not Grihastha. Yeah. Or minimize it, limit it. Or, Disclaimer, I'm not married, this is, you take it as you may. So that's problems, you know, at least someone who's taking a position where people have so much faith in their words, they have to be careful. You know, people say, um, you know, I, I get so many emails, I'm having this legal problem, what do I do? I didn't know I was, I didn't know gurus become lawyers. Uh, you know, you think I should buy this land or this land or invest in this land? I'm going to tell you to buy that land and you're going to get cheated and now it's my fault. Should I marry this one or that one? He told, my girl told me to marry her and it turned out bad. I have no faith in this girl. So at least to know that this is the, the territory. 
Because there's such deep faith that goes along with that position. So, yes? Well, was Prabhupada's Prabhupada, what? Constantly, he decided. Some. But as time went on, less and less, we had no time for it. He wanted the GPC to do that. Prabhupada counseled in the beginning. Yeah, he could read his letters, lots of counseling. Later on, he wanted the GPC to do that. He just wanted to write his books. And if he was managing everything, he couldn't write his books. Some great letters. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you need to do Mataji's person. One can, cannot qualify themselves to become Diksha Guru. Say that. One, he himself can not, other can, can not qualify them to become Diksha Guru, to purify ones. Now, in second generation, Mataji asked, no, the discussion was going on, one cannot deprove others to become qualified to take, become Diksha Guru. Unless and until he is not pure. Purified himself. We can, cannot train to be a diksha. Someone is not a pure devotee, how can we become? We cannot train someone to be diksha. Related to that, that second generation, now the gurus are deputing some temple bachelors and others to be, take diksha in future. So what will happen in the future? Next generation. <coughs> Everything depends on Purity, humility, and cooperation, and honesty, and sincerity. To the degree that we have those, things will be good. To the degree we don't, there will be problems. You know the problems in the material world. So if we, if we have the same consciousness, we have the same problems. Um, a lot of devotees want the gurus to to train their disciples to be gurus so that they can make that transition smoother. The problem, you know, you're, all, you're going to have a problem if people want to be guru for the wrong reason. So I want to be the what? The power, prestige, money. If you want to be guru to serve and still live simply, then everything should be good. But if you're going to take that position, you have to be very Christian conscious. You have to be very stable. And you have to be a good example. Because people have so much faith in you. And if you, if you can't follow well, people will lose faith. I was telling the turnout today, I said, people come to Islam with some faith, and their faith grows as they mature. And the faith grows because of the examples of senior devotees. And the faith becomes diminished because of bad examples of senior devotees. And the faith really becomes diminished because of the bad example of gurus. So the more you respect someone, the more your faith will break if they don't maintain um, at least the sufficient standard, you know, at least what Prabhupada expected. But it's true for all of us, because you're all leaders on some level. You're bhakti virtue leaders. So you have bhakti virtue group, they have faith in you. If you slip, their faith will <coughs> be affected. Any guru slips, it affects the faith of so many who aren't his disciples. Right? So I would say the responsibility that all of us have if we want to spread Krishna consciousness is to be examples and be stable and steady and humble and genuine and real and nice and kind. Yes? In that way that you speak before, a guru not, not has to know everything about any topic, yeah. but has the, the contacts or know, uh, I can connect myself with this yeah. type of shiksha, this type of... Yeah. Okay. The guru needs to know what he doesn't know. That's okay. You want to? Yeah. I was I was just wanted to say about the um, the you were saying that uh, the brahmacharis in Gauri Math um, would like would be like four to sixteen rounds. So I was just wondering where 
Prabhupada's, you know, when Prabhupada said he the standard 64, where that came from? Traditionally, that's the standard. And there are <coughs> there are brahmacharis who go to Nanda chant 64. Like Pujaris, you know, the Pujaris sit there, they give Chanarita, and they're just chanting Japa. So the idea is if. My understanding of 64 is if you have no service, what are you going to do all day? So chant 64 rounds, that'll take up your whole thing. And if you don't believe me, try it. It takes most of the day. And if you chant 64 rounds, you don't have time for gossip. So if you have a problem with gossip and criticizing, just chant 64 rounds. People try to talk to you and say, I can't talk, I have to chant. Did we stop? Yes, we do. Probably yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this often uh, happens in this form that uh, it's, it's not that it means it's maybe out of confusion that it happens a lot with Ajinkya and me. When we tell people that we follow you and uh, we follow you so much and everything we try to serve you, people ask if you're serving so much. Uh, why don't you take Diksha from him? Why why are you going to some other guru? And we try to tell them that you know we in our heart we have the Diksha Guru place meant for someone else and Shiksha Guru for you, but they're not able to understand that. How do we you know connect this? How do we? It's a personal thing. I don't understand it either. <laughs> it's a per- I don't try to understand it. It's a personal thing. Maybe you can say. You know, unless you have that experience, you wouldn't understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've raised people in Krishna consciousness from you know, the time they were like, you know, all their problems, everything. You know? And then they write me a letter ten years later. I just want to let you know I just got initiated. Just like, I don't, I don't have a problem with it personally. I just don't understand. Um, I would I would only have a problem with it if I think it's a cultural problem in this one. With like, why did you do that? When you actually had a group. Yeah. It's kind of funny. People ask me how do I know my group is. So the smart aleg answer is you're asking me. Is that you're asking me? Who you ask? Yeah, I never say that. Kind of also, Maharaj, uh, one question was, I have seen sometimes uh, when uh, Prabhupada's disciples used to go to him regarding any marriage issues, so he used to get disturbed and say that, I don't want to deal with so much of marriage problems. So should people come to their guru and... They should come to the guru's wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have a really good arrangement. <laughs> we have in-house, in-house marriage counseling. <laughs> should, you, should you go to the sannyasi? I don't think so. Um, should you go to a... Um, yeah, you go to someone you can trust. You know. Some sannyasis are really good actually, with marriage. Some grihasas are not. <coughs> Prabhupada was doing marriage counseling because he was doing everything in the beginning. He had to do everything in the beginning. But uh, some gurus have disciples who are marriage counselors, so they'll, they'll just naturally go to the disciples will go to them. I know something about marriage. I teach it. My wife teaches it. So it's a more natural that we would do it. But it's not, you know, it's not like my full-time job. But I think it's helpful. Like my wife and I did a course on how to choose a partner. I think that was very helpful. Like essentially helpful. Yes. Most, mostly. Uh, Что нам делать после вашего отъезда? What should, what should we be doing after you leave Mayapur? Uh, tomorrow. Uh, 
Yeah. They need help on the book table. <laughs> they should be doing the same thing that you do when I do. The same thing when I do. And, um, yeah, you don't just want to take the nectar and enjoy it and then fall into my flavors. You want to take it and churn it. And, like, let's use it and go out and serve. That's the only way it's going to work. You take everything and you, you apply that to your sadhana and service and you energize it. It has to be like that. Yes. Maharaj, I think uh, myself and Mayuresh, we are one of those uh, those rarest people in Iskhan who are already known by our Shiksha Guru before initiation. <laughs> and uh, uh, I read a, beauty, a beautiful thing in Gaur Govind Maharaj's book. Uh, he writes that whether it is the Shiksha Guru or the Diksha Guru who takes you back to God and he asks us that whoever you are attached to more or whoever you are more in contact. So that's probably the Shiksha Guru. For Adani, it might be. Depends how many disciples the Guru has. He doesn't have a lot of disciples, he's pretty much the main Sikha Guru. And it depends on your temples and who's, who's there. And, and we're going to try to take Prasadam now. Right? One more. Sometimes the Siksha or Diksha Guru is the same person. <coughs> yeah, most of the most probably, yeah. That's what I was saying. He doesn't have a lot of disciples. Right? Okay. Hare Krishna. Oh yeah. So, um, the turn up and Sam can you stand up? Turn up and Sam Darshan are counselors. They're trained in the same company. Well, the turn up is still being trained. And um, if you have any problems, go to them. Say something, Vachana, about what you do. So we call it transformational coaching. Many people may not ever think okay, coaching, but um, the training we have is based on the principles of Bhagavad Gita, um, how to understand the gunas, how to move through the gunas, try to come to set the gun. So everyone's probably had an experience where you keep repeating something over and over, you just keep manifesting similar things in your life, or you have you don't have the amount of Lakshmi you want. This is due usually because of consciousness. We, we, we shifted our consciousness. What we are manifesting externally is because of what's going on internally. So the process of transformational coaching is we uh, try to empower the person we, we both feel we really like working with devotees supporting devotees, it's, it's a service. Um, supporting devotees to really come to a higher state of consciousness, bringing people to sattva -gun. We need to come to sattva -gun if we're going to practice bhakti on a higher level. And 